Hi boys and girls. You know, one of the most beautiful things about art is you can create art no matter where you are in the world and with whatever materials you have available. So I am so excited to do this art activity with you. It is a painting that we're going to do that is inspired by an artist named Heather Galler. And she is an artist who creates so many different types of arts. But um, one of her most popular paintings is the bouquet of flowers that she creates. And it's such a vibrant bouquet. And um, just the style that she uses is really cool. And a lot of the elements that we've talked about in my class are things that you'll see in her art. So I'm going to talk to you about the materials that you need. You need a paper. This is a thick paper that I have, but any kind of paper will do. Um, or if you have a canvas at home, you can use a canvas. I also have a nice sharpened pencil with an eraser. I have a black marker. This is a permanent marker, so please ask your family if you can use that before you get it. <laughs> and I do have um, two different size paintbrushes. I have a paper towel, but I'm also wearing an apron because I like to just wipe my paintbrush off on my apron sometimes. And I'm gonna be using watercolor paints. Now some watercolor paints have the, let's see, like eight colors on there the warm and the cold colors, and then it has brown and black. But this one has all of the colors, and I really like using this one here. If you don't have paints at home, if you don't have watercolor or acrylic, you can use markers, um, you can use crayons, color pencils, you could use whatever you have. So, let's get started. Let me move my camera a little bit so you can see my paper. There we go. Kind of tilt it a little bit. Let's see how I can fix that. I think that's okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's talk about this artist. She uses so many different um, designs and patterns when she creates her flowers. But one thing that she is consistent about is she always uses circles for her flowers. So we're going to start with making some circles that are going to represent our flowers. Now, if you want to use something um, like the I don't know, like a lid jar, like a lid jar, a jar of a lid, a lid of a jar. What am I trying to say? <laughs> the lid of a jar. There we go. Thank you. Um, to create a circle, um, you can use that to trace. Or if you just want to freehand it like I'm going to do, then you can do that too. Because we want these flowers to look organic. Oh, that's a fancy word, right? Okay, so I'm going to start up on the top because remember we want to have the vase at the bottom or if you want to be fancy, you can say the vase. But anyway, so I'm going to start here with a circle. Okay, and if you're not comfortable making a circle, one thing I, su I suggest is taking a deep breath, letting it out, and just go. Oh, see, I think that one came out better than the first one. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do another circle. And then maybe another one up here. And remember, they can be different sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. They can be large, medium, or even small. Um, so this artist makes a lot of flowers, and that's what makes a bouquet, right? And she creates a variety. And variety means different types of flowers. So I'm going to have... Let's see, right now I have four, but I want to do five. So I'm going to do one more over here. We just don't want any down here at the bottom because we need that space for something else. Just move some stuff around a little bit. Okay, so inside of those flowers, we're going to use different types of lines. Here I have a circle, and I'm just going to make some rays going out using straight lines. Okay, now this one right here, I'm going to do a medium sized circle in the middle, so it kind of looks like a donut. <laughs> and I'm going to put some curved lines. Oh, I like the way this one looks. Yep. Okay, and I'm going to go up here, and this one I think I'm just going to do some polka dots. And then this one, I'm going to do several circles. Now, if I'm moving a little fast, you can always pause it. Or maybe you have some different ideas that you want to do. 
Um, these are just some suggestions and things that I'm thinking about for my flowers. So if you have other ideas, then go for it. Maybe you don't wanna do circles. Maybe you wanna do stars or hearts. Um, maybe you wanna do some stripes, like I'm gonna do on this small one right here. I'm gonna do some diagonal lines. Oh, do you know what? We forgot to sing our art song. Oh man, how did I forget? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're at home and you're watching, I think you should sing the art song when you get the chance. All right, so I'm happy with the amount of flowers that I have. If you want to add more to it, you can, but I'm going to stop at five. I think that's a good amount. Um, the next thing that we're going to add is we're going to add some leaves. Now when we add these leaves, we want them to kind of be tucked behind our flowers. What is that word called that we talked about? We talked about it primarily in third grade, um, third and fourth grade, but it's when something is covering something else. Oh, somebody said it. Was it you or was it you? Overlapping, that's the word. <laughs> so let's create some leaves that are overlapped um, by the flowers. So this leaf is kind of hiding behind this one here. I'm gonna make a line down the center and some diagonal lines. And I'm gonna make a leaf up here. This one is not gonna overlap anything or be overlapped. Okay. And the reason why we would wanna create some leaves that are, um, or that, that overlapping effect is to give our our art some depth. That way it doesn't look so flat. We want to kind of look like it's, you know, 3D when it's really not. So, kind of tricks the eye a little bit. In a good way. <laughs> and then, do you know what? I want to have a big one hanging down over here. Because that's a big empty space. I could have filled it with a flower, but I think I'm going to do a leaf. There we go. So now let's do the vase. So I'm gonna make two diagonal lines coming down. And then remember, we want our, <clears throat> we want our art to look um, like it has some depth. So on the bottom part, we want it to look like it's standing up and not so much like it's flat. So instead of making a straight horizontal line, let's make a curved line. Kind of like a happy face. And then back here, I'm going to create a horizontal line for the table, just like that. And then I'm noticing this space right here, so I'm actually going to fit a small flower and a little leaf. Because the more details we add, the more vibrant and unique our art is going to look. And I think I'm just going to leave this one with the circle in the middle. Be a little dot. <laughs> and then I'm noticing a space right here. So if you are looking at your art and you notice some gaps, I would say that would be a good um, space to add your leaves if you're not sure where to put them. Or an extra flower. And what I'm going to do for my vase is I'm gonna add some stripes. And I'm also curving my stripes too to give it the illusion that it is, um, that it is curved and not flat, okay? So there it is, it is all done and I cannot wait to get the color on there. One thing that I wanna point out, um, and if you get the chance, I think that you should um, go onto Google and look at some of Heather Geller's art um, and you can see her style but she uses a lot of vibrant colors here um, but a lot of times she leaves the vase black and white and sometimes she'll do like a checkered pattern at the bottom as a matter of fact let's go ahead and do that so to make a checkered pattern <clears throat> I'm just gonna make some Lines that go up and down. What do we call these types of lines? Yep, vertical. 
and then the lines that go across horizontal yep okay <laughs> so let's add some color so I have my water now like I said if you have markers at home and you want to use markers and use markers if you have crayons whatever you have okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start with these colors on this side here oops can you guys see okay so these colors right here what family of colors are those the blue and the green yeah those are the cool colors or we can call them cold colors so I'm gonna start with this beautiful baby blue color and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this whole flower. Now because I used a permanent marker, I can go right over those lines without it um, ruining my lines that I've just made with my marker. But if you use a pencil, you might have to go over it and trace it with your marker before you start painting. Okay, now I'm going to do a darker blue and I like to jump around and do different flowers I don't like to just stick with one flower so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do this flower and I'm gonna do the outside so blue green and what other color will make the cold family. Blue, green, and yeah, purple. And purple is my favorite color of all time. I absolutely love purple. Whenever I see purple, it just, I don't know, it just gives me a really happy feeling. Something about it. And purple is actually both of my grandma's favorite color my mom's mom and my dad's mom. It's a little fun fact. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some green. And I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my leaves green. And one thing that I forgot to mention is um, Heather Galler, who is the artist this painting is inspired by, um, she, does so many different patterns in the leaves. Sometimes she makes the stripes like we did. Sometimes she does polka dots. Um, you could do zigzag lines. I just love how there's so many possibilities. There's not a wrong way to do it. The only way to do it is just to express yourself and use the colors that make you happy. going over, filling in any spots that I missed. And since I'm working on all the leaves, I might as well finish them, right? Now, I'm painting pretty quickly, but you don't have to paint this quickly. If you like to take your time, you can. But one thing's for sure, I would love to see everyone's painting when it's all done. So maybe your family can take a picture of it and upload it so that I can see it. I would love to see everybody's art. And the most wonderful thing about this activity is that any grade level can do this. From kindergarten all the way up to high school, your grandma can do it, your parents, anybody who is interested can do this art. You could even do a mixed media. So I have watercolor, but I could also use my markers to fill in any colors on here. Okay, this is like an orange red. And remember when you use watercolor, you have to kind of make it look like a little pool to wake up those colors. And another reason why I'm painting a little faster than I typically do is because I have my paper standing up on this easel. This is an easel here. Um, and because my paint is wet, I don't want it to drip down. So that's why I'm kind of painting quickly. 
because you know when I'm in my classroom I have it flat down under my document camera. So that's another reason why I'm painting fast. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to use this bright pink to do this flower here. And then the, let's see, I'm going to go with orange. This is a really pretty orange. And I'm going to go around this one here. And as you're painting, I want you to think about all of those families of colors that we've talked about. Not just warm and cold, but those other families. Like, what do we call the family whose colors are opposite of each other on the color wheel? Do y'all remember? What do we call those colors? We also nickname them the best friend colors. Yeah, complimentary, there we go. So, quick art quiz. Who is, hmm, let's see. Who is green's best friend? If we're talking about complementary colors. Yeah, somebody said it. <laughs> red. So here are the two complementary colors, red and green. Who is yellow's best friend? Hmm. Yellow's always the one that kind of trips people up. Sometimes we forget. Yes, purple. And the last two, who is orange's best friend? Blue, there we go. So orange and blue, purple and yellow, and green and red are the best friend colors when you pair them together. So that could be another um, element that you add to your painting to make it even more special is thinking about those family of colors and how you can match them in flowers. I think that would definitely make your art stand out even more. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do that with this one here. I'm going to do a darker orange for that color that, for the flower that I added blue to. And there's something about blue and orange together. It just stands out so beautifully. There we go. And I'm just going to dry my brush and pick up some of that before it drips down. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to take um, maybe some red, a dark red. Now I'm going to go in the area behind this yellow flower that I painted. Sometimes when I paint, I get so quiet because I like to think about a lot of different things. <laughs> like, you know, what I'm going to eat for dinner. <laughs> I think about my family. I think about, I don't know, places that I want to travel to. I think about you all. I think about my students. I think about chocolate a lot. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do just one more. There's a blue in here that I really like. It's like this really dark blue, and I really like it. So I'm gonna go up here with my dark, dark blue inside of these stripes. Just like that. And I think I did everything. Okay, so the last part of my art is I'm gonna take my black, and I'm just gonna do my pattern down here. So to do my pattern, I'm gonna do, paint this one whole section, skip one square, go to the next square, skip this one, go to the next one. Actually, they're more like rectangles, huh? Rectangles, squares. And then when I go down to the bottom, I'm going to repeat my pattern, but I don't want to paint the one right underneath the one that's black. I'm going to skip it. Be 
and some more paint. Just like that. Whoops, kind of went outside of the line a little bit. We call that a beautiful oops, right? Okay, and I only have one more to go. There we go. Um, and so Heather Galler, um, when you see her art, she typically leaves this black and white. Um, and sometimes she does like the background and she does different patterns. You can do stripes in the background if you wanted to. Um, or if you just wanted to do like one solid color, you could also do that. But I'm going to stop right here. I hope that you enjoyed this art activity. I hope that this um, allows you to have those art conversations with your family, talking about the different um, family colors that we've talked about, the different elements. Maybe you want to add some value to your art and give it some shadows. Um, remember value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So there's so many things you can do with this. You can create some resistance art. I know we did a lot of that in second grade where we used crayons and we painted over it with watercolor. Um, yeah, so they're just, my mind is just like spinning with different ideas. So if you do do this activity, please share it um, on the Excellencia page. I would love to see it. I hope that all of you have a great rest of your day. Bye.